see, ah, oh, we see a hand. What, what kind of Harley? Oh, you know, <laughs> that's okay. As I often tell people, hey, all you need to know about my bike is it's sleek, it's red, it's fast, right? Um, I ride a Honda CBR 300R. It's a sport bike. And there's a reason why I like to ride sport bikes, because they're just nimble, and they're fast, and they're responsive, which kind of goes along with um, my approach to life, I suppose. But I went on this trip. And it was just amazing. I mean, it is the most exhilarating way to travel. If, and I've had people say, does it count if I ride a scooter? I'm like, absolutely it counts if you ride a scooter. You know, even, even a fast bike would count, you know. Because you get the idea is that you, the sights and the sounds and the smells, it's just so intoxicating. You just, you miss all that in a car. And I thought, this is really exciting to be on the back of his bike. We came back to this trip, and he said, you were meant to ride. I said, my own bike? And he said, yes, Elise, you were meant to ride. And so I thought, well, I don't know. We'll I think I could, but I'm not really sure how do you do all that. Well, long story short, you take a motorcycle safety course by the Motorcycle Safety Foundation. And I ended up on a Friday night at Heartland Honda in Springdale, Arkansas, uh, sitting in a class with about 15 other people. We were all kind of looking at each other going, are you really going to try to learn how to ride a motorcycle? And it was really, it was great. You have to study, pass a written test, and then the next day, you spend all day on a riding course, basically they're trying to make sure you're not going to kill yourself, and you almost do a couple times, but you go through all different types of skills before you can actually receive your license. And so I was sitting in this class on Friday night, and we had an instructor, his name was Big Mike, and he's just exactly like you would think. He was this big guy, he had tattoos on his arms and a black leather vest, and he said one thing I remember through the evening, there was lots of instruction, but he said one thing that really stuck with me. He said, I'm going to teach you something that will save your life. So of course, everybody sits up and leans forward. What is this? And he said, the most dangerous place that you will be on a bike is in an intersection, which is kind of obvious. But he said, the second most dangerous place is in a turn in a term. And we thought this was really interesting. Why would it be in a turn? He said, well, as you approach a turn, you're having to make a lot of mental decisions, like judging the trajectory of the turn itself. If you've ever seen anybody in a ditch, you know it's because they didn't judge very well. They were going too fast or just they didn't hit it just right. Um, but it's not just that. It's also this is where all the hazards kind of gather. The rock slicks, the oils, the potholes. I mean, there's just a lot of things that can make your bike slide. So we said, here's what you do. As you approach a turn, you look into the turn to assess all of the potential hazards that are in the turn, but you don't stare straight into it. If you do, he said, there's actually a name for it. It's called target fixation. Don't stare straight into the hazards. Instead, you see them, you assess them, you make a plan to maneuver around them, and then you look where you want to go. He said, this is called looking through the turn. Look where you want to go, and your bike will follow your eyes. Now, if you've ridden a bike, you kind of know this instinctively, too, is you look where you want to go, and then you pull the bike toward where you're looking. And he said, this is called looking through the turn. And I sat there, and I thought, oh, my goodness, this is the greatest metaphor for business and life I have ever heard looking through the turn. And I will tell you, at that point, it really became my mantra. I thought, I want to be like that. I want to be somebody who can see those hazards, but not freak out by them, and keep my eyes focused on where I want to end up. So as we spend the next couple of minutes together, I want you to think about, how can I be a leader who looks and leads through the turn? How do I have the nimbleness and the flexibility and, and to be adaptive enough to respond to whatever hazards come my way, but I don't let them trip me up? How do I do that? How do I keep my eyes focused on where I want to, want to end up? And I promise you, if you do that, you will get there, wherever there is for you. Maybe not in record time, but you will reach the destinations that matter most to you if you don't lose sight of the goal.